I'm going to call this to order at 7.39. Mary's going to keep our time. Um, I'm going to add also executive session um, at the end. Instead of anticipating, we're going to use it. The Title I VSA 313A3, the appointment, employment, for evaluation of a public official or an employee. So I'm just going to put it in there if we need it. All right. Any public comment? No? All right. Moving on. We're, we have the consent agenda. Um, we need it. I would like to remove um, number two out of the consent agenda to make a correction to the minutes. All right, is there a second to pull, the, pull that? I'll second. All right. All those in favor of pulling the uh, minutes from the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Right. You want to go over that and then uh, we can just put it yeah. in at the end and do it all at once? Yep. So um, Allison asked me to do this because she's in Bristol meeting. Uh, in the discussion in uh, B, the setting the budget target, in the conversation of the uh, phantom students, uh, kind of uh, part way down in the, uh, say a quarter of the way down on the second page, so 70 students coming off is based on the weighting of the students. And Allison had said the towns have already gotten the benefits of the drop pursuant to Act 46. And what she, um, the actual wording should be, towns, uh, town school districts have already gotten benefits of drop pursuant, no, drop through K through six, through the K through six years, sorry. And it does not continue uh, on to the Union High School. And she just wanted to clarify that statement. Okay. Did you catch that off, Sandy? I'm trying. Okay. Right. So Can you just read it one more time? And then so, Thank yep. You. Town school districts yeah. have already gotten benefits of drop, the drop in the student uh, population through the K through six years. And it does not continue on to the Union High School. I got it. Anyone else have anything in the minutes while they're pulled out? through any actions that are taken and then they they will be changed from draft because once they're approved so before they're approved they will be corrected and then we are marking them as approved, approved with the correction. Agenda. I'll make that motion. All right. Is there a second? Second. Carolyn? All right. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda with the minutes corrections included, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Right. And I apologize. I was trying to find the place in there. Um, Bonita and Carol. Carol. Sandy, when you send those to Karen, if you could just make a note in the email to look for the changes to the minutes, just so she doesn't miss that. Right, so she can't do that. Right. So now we're going to move down to the report of the superintendent. We do not have an, an ends report. There's none. Moving down to executive limitations. Updated, update financial report. And that was enclosed in your packet. Are there any questions around that financial report? Do you have any updated information? I 
saw the gym floor was in, included. There was a number included with the gym floor in that report. Um, yeah, so the, the only updates I have are more in terms of progress um, beyond that figure. And uh, we've identified a logo that we'll be using to put down and the cost associated with that. So that was the last sort of piece of the puzzle to get the gym floor completed. Um, and in terms of process, they're finishing up the sanding now? We're working on the sanding. So the floor is down, the bleaches are back. So they're working on the sanding of the floor before they apply that uh, insignia and also then put on the stain. And sanding, sanding will be completed sometime next week? Yeah, I would, I would hope so. I think is the projection. Yeah, and then yeah, they'll put down the, you know, the sight lines and end lines and markings and all that stuff, that logo. Then they seal over it, needs to cure for a little bit, and then we'll be ready to roll. So that amount in the financial report was like sort of right where we are right now with the cost of the floor? No, it doesn't include the $6,000. For the lowest plan. Right. So that, but it includes everything other than that. I just signed that. Any other questions around the financial report? Okay, move on. The, uh, we have our next item is action on the career change incentive. We have already taken action. So um, if you want to discuss whether you want to change that action or, or like leave that action as it is, now is the time. If you need more information, that would be uh, involving personnel and their, you know, more specifics, that information would have to be provided in an executive session. But if you want to have the discussion about whether you want to change your action, this is the time, you could do that now. Anita. Um, I'm wondering if we can hear the recommendation from the superintendent. So the recommendation from the superintendent is to open up nine slots for the career change incentive. And at the last meeting, this board decided that they would take, they would not um, take any, open any slots and offer the career change incentive. So, Anita. And um, th so the new, is there new information that uh, in the process of uh, the administration going back and looking at the whole situation again um, because I don't think we had a recommendation last time that when we voted no is that is that the case right we did there wasn't a recommendation we didn't have any information it, it seemed like it was, it was just past practice we were, you know, every year we, we've said no so I think we've got to the Howard, that if someone did choose the airtime, then it would cost more um, in that first year, um, even with their replacement savings, but the subsequent years, there would be savings realized. Well, there could be. The, the only issue that I have a brother with, and I've mentioned this to Patrick, is that say, for instance, we do replace somebody and we get into the negative because we paid three years of airtime. Let's say we wind up hiring somebody that's going to cost us $15,000 extra. Now, all of a sudden, that person next year is rifted because they're the low person on the totem pole. And what happened was when a rift takes place, you're going to get rid of your newest person. And if that person's gone, 
then the savings that we would have had for those additional two years would be gone. That's the only driller I have with this, you know, the financial driller. But if the position's gone, all of the funds that were associated with that also come out of the budget. Yeah, I understand, but you know, it could be that because we have to riff that person, that person was the person we were counting on to have that savings, and that person's now gone. So that that's the only driller I have with that whole piece. Danita, um, I would like to make a motion to uh, accept the superintendent's recommendation so that we can pull this, get this on the floor to have the conversation and take a vote. Sweet. I will I ask I make a motion to approve the uh, recommendation from the superintendent and extend the previous vote. I second it. necessarily be replaced because that definitely presents um, a different scenario than if you had to replace it and you run into those risks of airtime versus a new person that was just discussed. So I am, I don't know if we can talk about that. I don't know if that's a, if that's something, that, I don't know, I, if there could be further discussion about that because I could see uh, potentially some really good savings there if, of course, the administration thought it would and they thought they could obviously provide, you know, what they need to do without replacing those positions. I'm not sure how much information you have, you have to answer that question. So I guess leave it to you. Yeah, so the, so the question is, if we offer nine slots and nine people choose to leave, or even if one person chooses to leave, would we be replacing all of the people that would choose to take this career change incentive? Um, I'd ask Jess to chime in on this, but I think the answer is it's really hard to say right now. Uh, because there are so many variables in who takes that um, the career change and what opportunities might present themselves based on the folks that choose to, the career change incentive. Um, it, we, we would have to basically um, use the information we would have when we have it and make the decision from there. So the potential exists to not fill out the positions. Um, having said that, the current budget doesn't show reduction in staff. Jody. Um, Patrick, may I ask you a question about the nine um, now day people of those, and I know you don't have a magic ball and you can't predict the future, <laughs> but what, what do you think the likelihood is of any or all of them accepting this offer? Really hard to say. Um, I, a bit I was going to say, um, I haven't figured in my head, but I don't know if the jazz or what Jesse's figure is. No, uh, I will share, <laughs> and there are no other details I can share, but at least two um, faculty members have shared that they plan to retire. Um, whether or not that comes to fruition um, you know, this year as planned, we don't know. Uh, and I have heard that there are several other members of the faculty considering retirement, but are going to hold out um, till the last minute to, to share that. I was going to say two to four, so we're on the same page, I think. <laughs> I think it could, it could be a greater number than four, yeah. from, from what I'm hearing. Yeah. Benita? Um, just in general, I find this a problematic piece of our contract. I think that uh, I'm a strong believer that if you're going to retire, then retire. And don't expect people to pay you to retire. Um, however, it is part of the contract. And it's part of the working landscape that our administration has to work within. And uh, I, I feel like that uh, I don't think that I am qualified to make that determination given 
the uh, landscape, the moonscape, the otherworldly scape that we're working within. Uh, I think that I have to look at the qualifications of the uh, administrators in this situation and uh, follow their uh, recommendation, their lead, uh, because, I, like I said, I just have a basic problem with the whole premise to begin with. I think it's ridiculous and always have. And uh, I would really love it if in the next contract we could change this from career change incentive plan. I just think that is like the most biggest joke in the history of the planet. Um, if we want to encourage somebody to make a career change rather than retire, then we darn well better be doing it through an evaluation system and do it properly instead of bribing people to be out of our system. So having said all that, I am uh, willing to support the uh, recommendation of the administration in this matter. Anyone else? Doug? I, I do right here agree with the recommendation for the for this. Um, all the all the past years I've been on the on the school board, we already said no, it costs too much money to do this. So um, without any explanation of why and any any description of how it actually works and everything. So I think this is actually very nice to see at least some thought that's being put into this. And I think it maybe it's risky, but then you know, you're not going to have any benefits if you just sit back and, and just go, go with the status quo. So that's why I'm willing to go with this. Sure. Um, when would this be offered to the staff? Once it's approved? Yep. So I, don't, I want to see if anybody else has a very do of any comments. Carol? Otto? Anybody? Uh, just one last question. Does this in, uh, affect benefits in any way? Current be benefits? It let uh, health insurance, uh, you know, any of the insurances, life insurance, just none the, of that. This the, is just the value salary. of the equivalent of two thirds of their salary Period. In, in one form or another, airtime, cash, or some combination of the two. Okay. Thank you. Sandy, did you have anything you wanted to add? No. You distribute these in executive session. Do they need to be collected? They should. Yes. They can. Yep. You can pass them over at the end when we're done. That's fine. Can I get a clarification? <coughs> Jody, what was your question before? You were asking what it would take impact. Yes. yes. Okay. I just wondered. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So the, it would be offered upon approval by the board, and it, it wouldn't take effect really until next school year, so July 1. So the folks that would choose to to uh, participate in the career change incentive would do so and would submit a letter of resignation um, effective uh, after June 30 of this year. I'll make a motion to... Well, we have a motion. Oh, we do? Yes, we have a motion to rescind the previous action oh. and to accept the recommendation. Excellent. So we're in discussion. So. Anybody has any more questions? Last chance. All right. So the motion is to rescind the previous action taken by the board at the last meeting and, ex and accept the uh, superintendent's recommendation to offer the career change incentive to nine slots at Mount Abraham. All the, if you are in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Pass. Okay. Um, let's see. Now we're moving down to monitoring report C2.4 financial planning and budgeting and C2.8 communication and support to the board. You are enclosed in your packet. Any questions? I didn't completely understand how monitoring report C2.3 dated 11 point uh, dated November 14th, 2014 related to 
2.4. So the, that section of 2.4, is it section B maybe? Um, that section of 2.4 basically says that to be in compliance with 2.4, it also means that everything in 2.3 has been done. Okay. And so it put me in a position, and I sort of started to go this way, it put me in a position of either writing monitoring report 2.3, even though it's not due right now, um, or and in doing so, having had not too much experience with 2.3 yet at this point because of the stage of the game we're in and in the process, or utilizing a 2.3 that had been used previously to capture that section. So I have, I actually have some language and I was interested in getting some feedback on this from boards because I have some other language that I had written that, that is a, it's more of a sort of narrative on each of those points of 2.3. I thought without it was lots that of later, it looked like it was based on 2.3. There's another section that looks like in, later in the 2.4, I'm sorry if I'm getting mixed up, I think it was later in the 2.4, maybe towards the very end. Notice the 2.3, no, and then I noticed the same language of this policy title 2.3 financial conditions and activities looked like it was kind of paraphrased in another place. Right, so, so the first part that you see is if you think back to the interpretation, the interpretation has me. Um, reporting out against sort of that opening statement of policy 2.4. Then I, ha I had an interpretation for each section underneath yep. that of yep. 2.4. So in the in the sort of broad statement well, of 2.4. It's the superintendent's interpretation on page 4 that looked like it was sort of like a rephrasing of that. Right, so that's sort when of it is exactly. It's a point by point with one or two edits. Correct. There were eight points in the 2.3, and you've got nine points in the superintendent's interpretation, which aligned really, really closely with that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is say, I no, I'm, no, I'm in a different one. OK. Doesn't necessarily follow. OK, so I don't need to make it more complicated. So you're citing 2.3 as evidence. <coughs> of that the office is in compliance. Exactly. So that was the other sort of interesting piece was, so that's a different superintendent, but it's the work that was done, so, and, and much of that is the offices. It represents the work of the office, and most of those folks are, are similar. So I decided to kind of go with that. I'm good, thank you. All right. All right. Any other comments on the monitoring reports? I think they have a feedback sheet. <coughs> There's a monitoring. <coughs> there was a. I didn't see it. I didn't see an evaluation it. form. Should be included in the back. Because I thought that the uh, the executive committee was accepting. Which was doing the. So pr procedurally, I think that each board was to review the report and complete sort of that checklist. Did the, mm -hmm. inter did the superintendent provide a reasonable interpretation, yes or no? Did the superintendent provide reasonable evidence, yes or no? Each board then submits that to the executive committee. I think the executive committee uses that for. Yeah, I don't see that form. Is that this? The monitoring worksheet? It's yes. a package. Yes. Monitoring okay. worksheet yes. for executive limitations. Exactly. Right after the financial. And so, so that would only happen for 2.4 and 2.8. Right. And you have to fill in 2.4 as that. 2.8 is already, you know, so the, the title's already in the 2.8 section. Where's the rubber stamp? <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. People on camera, I'm joking. We don't rubber stamp on here. Can I ask a question? 
Can I use your copy? Sure. Are we, it's in here? It's in this one? Yeah, I'll just take one out of here. I was going to say it's actually Allison's, but yeah, oh, of course you can. But I think that's the mechanism through which the local boards give feedback is. to the All right. executive committee. All right. So the question we have then, I'll make sure I have a 2.4. So 2.4 is 2.8. Okay. So the, what, the determination we need to make is, has the superintendent provided a reasonable Im interpretation of the policy supported by rationale? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. Is, uh, that's on, I'm doing both? On both? Or do you want to break up two points? Both. Okay, on both? Are you in agreement that yes. that is on both? Yes. Okay. All right. Is there sufficient evidence to convince you that this limitation has not been violated? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. So... This will be Mount A. It's 2.3, right? 2.4 2.8. 2.8. And a sneaky way, 2.3 also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there, no, there's also questions on the back side. That... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there sufficient evidence to indicate compliance with the whole policy, including the open statement, not just portions of it? Yes or no? Yes. 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 All right. And is that was sort of where I was going with that auto that there's the opening statement and I need to, to interpret and provide evidence. And I'll each section I've been, I've been I had to read each one several times to figure out what you had done by breaking it up into sections like that, and then this made more sense when I was able to answer that question. So is there any reason to doubt the integrity of the information presented? Yes or no? No. 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 If the superintendent has indicated non-compliance with any aspect of this policy, is there a commitment or plan as to when the board can expect to see compliance and is proposed? And is the proposed time frame acceptable? Yes or no? That's not really not applicable. Not applicable. So no. really, it's sort of applicable. There's a you, you, you have one section that you're so so NA. Yes. We had non-compliance in the absence of a strategic plan and a plan to make a strategic plan. So yes. Oh, so yes. Yes. So my, my interpretation was yes, based on that yeah. reading of it. Did I get that right? <laughs> Having reviewed the monitoring report, does any does anything you have learned make you consider whether the policy itself should be amended or revised? No. No. significant amount of money has really been put into um, putting band-aid fixes on a building that we know needs renovation um, and so I would offer that a more sustainable solution is to form a renovation committee um, and I know there are many interested individuals who are very invested in the first process and learned a lot from that first process a few years ago um, who would love to be on that journey with us happy to answer other questions and give more specifics, but I think the gym floor um, shows us what is to come if we continue to neglect some infrastructure. Um, and knowing also, you know, the building is the hidden curriculum, you know, it, it influences the way students learn and the way teachers and students thrive in a building. So I would offer that I, I hope that we can come up with a more achievable plan, perhaps a little bit more of a conservative plan than the one that was originally proposed a few years ago. Um, and I, I have all the confidence that we can make that happen. Adam. What, what would the deliverable of such a committee be exactly? I am not sure. I know that they um, are to work 
also on developing some of the plans, some of the non-negotiables of the work, that these are the must-dos um, for any type of renovation. Um, make sure the scope of the project is within the lines of what the community can support. Um, but I think it's really to see through um, the process from start to finish. So the last time the Mount Abraham Board gave direction, um, they gave some general directions to form a committee and its tasks, and then um, they, at that time, appointed me to, to, to pick the individuals to be on the, co the committee. Um, they did give some guidance around, you know, how many community members they wanted, how many board members, they wanted students, you know, things like that. They did give that guidance, and then I filtered through the, with the superintendent, through the requests of interest, the interest letters, and picked people to, to be a part of that committee. But they in, gave the sort of, here's what we want you to see, tell us, you know, start with the study and take us all the way through to, to a bond. So that was our task. Uh, so the board self, uh, sorry, the, the renovation study committee would write the requirements for a committee to do the work or would do the work? Yeah. They would do the work. So form a building renovation study committee. So you just talked about a much broader committee than just members of this particular board. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. It'd be an, it'd be like we charge a group to form a committee, and and we'd give them a task of what they had to do. So. Um, and it's a huge task. So that was the next question. Was, ginormous. That was my next question was, what's the likely schedule of such a committee and how frequently would such a committee meet? How many hours per week kind of thing? Yes, yes. that's up to the committee. Yeah, once, it's, we, once, it's, once we put What have past course, practices indicated? It was, that was a tremendous amount of work. Right. And they worked, they, they met weekly. Weekly. They uh, worked with the, with, uh, they, they got, the uh, initial bids for the uh, architects and the planning. Uh, we got a grant for part of the planning, or no, didn't we get a grant? For, I think we got a planning grant of some sort from somehow. Some of it was paid for. Yeah, we, we, I thought it was the bus, right. was the bus. Yeah, we used the bus money. We used the bus money. For the, for the bulk of it. But, uh, so a lot of money has already meeting, been spent. Two hours a week in meetings and a couple more hours in homework. And then, uh, and then, visiting. Uh, you know, they went to schools and observed other school buildings. And they, hosted, um, they hosted events where the community members. Tons were in of the events. Building. They they did all kinds around, of around, tours. Around, right. tours. Right. They did the tours. And that started in what month and ended in what month, roughly? It was what? It was probably the whole process was like maybe in the fall. It was a. It was probably about a year and a half. October, it was a, probably October, a year and a half. November. And then the vote happened in November and right. failed. Um, just with the plan B to build on, or at least have access to our last bond vote, um, the last renovation project we yes. had. Okay. So it wouldn't be really from starting from ground zero. We have a at least a little bit of right because we had an intensive, extensive study mm -hmm. done yes. right. about the building. By, by Dora and Whittier. Mm -hmm. So we have some information already available that we didn't have right. the last time. Yeah. Yeah, Am I monopolizing the discussion? <laughs> no, no, I don't mean to be. Uh, was there much debrief done after the vote, last vote went down to understand what the weaknesses in the proposal were and what adjustments would be needed to be made to make it more acceptable? Yep. Yep. Say again? Yes. $32 million. Was the that was the weak tank. part. Because that was a fabulous plan. That was, that. I still think about that, what that building would be like right now. Mm -hmm. And I just, it makes me sad. You know, and that was one of the things people complained still to this day to me that we ever put that in front of the voters. And I said, you don't understand. The board felt like that the voters had the right to see the way it should be done in our brains for the kids. And that was what that $32 million project was. And so, I, I still don't apologize for putting that in front of the voters. I still think it was the right thing to do because it was an incredible plan. But we can also do it. 
have a $16 million plan. But the problem they wanted, uh, the other thing that people wanted was they wanted to have two options yeah, on the same ballot, and you can't do that. You can't have option A, option B. You have to, you have to go with one. So there's, there's a lot of, the bottom line for me is there's a lot of history. There's those people that, a lot of those people that served on that committee have a wealth of knowledge that is still totally retained and um, hopefully a good share of those people would be able to be still interested and be able to, you know, however we structure it, have it be that we don't lose all of that uh, knowledge. How many hours a week? You'd have to, you know what, who can tell you that is Shauna. She was the vice chair at that point and she led that, she was the head of the committee. She was the chair. She can tell you. I, I can't remember. It was a lot. It was a lot of me. Tremendous amount of work. And I would assume if you have people who are experienced and have been through been through it once that it would be as it could be a little bit more streamlined, a, a but whole committee. Right, and you would want, but you would want new people on the committee in order to be able to have some diversity in the thinking, because so that everybody doesn't feel like, oh, this is just going to be a boilerplate kind of a thing. So, I'm just, I'm, I'm just worried that we're going to say, no, I'm not going to go through this again. You know, uh, the, the the people on the committee. They're okay. still. I, I've, I've, if there's passion there, then that's good. There's st yeah. it's still passion. They still. I mean, people. The people that did that all a lot of that work still feel exactly the same way about it. That they, it needs to happen, and how can we do that? How can we get something to be improved? At least in this situation with the gym floor, we can sh we show the public that you know this is. These are things that are, you know. These are things that are going to be going on in the next couple of years, or until the, you know, next millennium. Really, just all these things are going to be repaired. So, uh, another question is: I wonder if the gym floor would have been cheaper through the renovation, if it was, if that part was going to be cheaper because they'd be doing a lot of other stuff along with it. If, if we can prove that, saying that it's going to be cheaper to do everything all at once, other than just piecemeal it out. Um, over time, it might be a good selling point, but you know we should have that figures. I'm sure in the in the information we have. I remember them talking about like why we couldn't do it in in step why in steps it was going to because of the the setup and takedown and the yes. moving and all that would was going to add to the total cost of all that. Right, I remember that. which we paid for just now. For, exactly. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Well, and the other thing is is that. Um, it would, you would hope, and you would hope to think that uh, that the state and the federal government would finally get to the place where they're ready to put money into a 40 plus years old school instead and, and foot part of the bill. I mean, it used to be they would pay 80% yeah. of, of building costs. And they, and this was with no, no, uh, no amount of money at all. So I think it's, I think there's some political things that need to happen here too. We should be getting on our representatives and our senators and say, people, you can't just think that the schools are going to fall apart and that um, we're going to be able to educate kids. Things have got to change that way. So I think that there's also some political muscle that we should be able to use. Get Dave Sharp down there and Fred and drag them through the school and, and get them to you know, start having, putting some pressure. And Patrick Leahy and all those guys. I mean, golly knows what's going to happen with our new president, but whatever. There's got to be, at some point, the state needs to stand behind the, the infrastructure of our buildings and not just say it's our problem. That's, I just think it's something we need to work on. If we move, are you looking for a motion to form a building renovation study committee? Mm -hmm. If we move and approve that, then what happens? Well, you can determine the makeup of that. In this meeting sitting right here, right you now? You could, yeah. Or, you know, what do you... Could, could I just make the suggestion that maybe uh, if we approve that planning process, that next uh, meeting, Don could come back with the makeup that we had of the previous committee, yep. and then we could take a look at that and see if we wanted to adjust it or whatever. Right, I could do that. 
Carol, perhaps it would be nice to invite Shauna and Dwayne to be able to speak to this. Yeah, that she can answer a lot of questions for sure. If, if we got the information beforehand, obviously, in you know, email, obviously, we get the packet. Um, if we had enough time to even talk to some of the people, call them up or something and see what their, their thoughts are and stuff. Um, is that appropriate? Can we do that to, you know, talk to, to Troy, you know, see, you know, what his, what his thoughts are and stuff about it, or should we just not? Um, you could cert I think you could certainly take the action to form the study committee, and then we could clarify its scope and the makeup, and you could certainly invite them to come to the next meeting, and we could set 15 minutes aside for a brief conversation about, you know, their work from before. Right. You could certainly do that. Are you ready for a motion? Sure. Uh, I'd like to move to form a building renovation study committee. All right. A second. Do we know where Bristol is? I'm sorry, Ian was looking for Bristol. Yeah. Sarah's <laughs> Emily's Amy, Sue's, can keep looking in somebody's room. There might, might be a library. library up on the way. <laughs> I'll second. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor of forming a building renovation study committee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? All right. I'll get the information and have that added to our next agenda for the next meeting, and we can we'll discuss it again. All right. Now we're down to report of the board, board management, delegation, uh, discussion around C3.4 monitoring superintendent's performance. And again, this is a presentation of the interpretations, the policies, and the metrics. If you have any feedback, Sandy and I will take that back to the Policy and Governance Committee. So, Donna, I have a comment. Um, in, so down in the, on the first page under section one in the interpretation, where it starts, um, I interpret monitoring to me. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, okay. So my only comment was that um, it talks about, um, in the last sentence it says, if the information provided does not prove policy compliance or reasonable progress toward the ends, it will not be considered as monitoring information. Mm -hmm. The only thing um, is it doesn't show the, like the policy pieces doesn't show the opposite. Like if the information provided does not prove policy compliance or non-compliance, um, it kind of seems to exclude that if you're not showing support for it, then it's not something you put in it. I don't want it to come off that way. Does that make any sense? It's saying if it only proves policy compliance, but it could also, the evidence could prove policy non-compliance, because the, 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 when they're doing the report, it, it, it obviously is important if you put things that are not, I, it, I know without being picky about the language, but the, the actual language is above and before the interpretation is monitoring is simply to determine the degree to which board policies are being met. Um, information that does not do this will not be considered to be monitoring information. So that to me says, positive or not positive. Um, it's just a comment to go back to the, I okay. didn't notice it when we were doing right. the Policy Governance Committee. I could probably explain it better there. Okay. Otto. I'm, I'm sorry, is it appropriate to comment, to Sandy's comment? Sure. Uh, I, just read that, I just read that to mean that it was just, don't put stuff in there that doesn't support the argument that you're in compliance, yeah. is how I, I read that. That's how I think I intended it when I wrote that. Like, too. if you put a bunch of stuff in there, don't give us just, all the just putting a bunch of stuff in there doesn't mean that, I mean, yeah. the stuff all has to align towards compliance. That's how I read it. Just because you wrote stuff doesn't mean that you're in compliance, is kind of how I read that. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and I get that. That's why I'm not saying don't say don't put stuff in that doesn't prove policy compliance. You just think it could have been worded better? No, I'm just saying it could actually literally say does not prove policy compliance or non-compliance. I just wonder why the superintendent would be putting information in to demonstrate that the office was out of compliance. This is us. This is us monitoring him. This is not his report, am I right? 3.4? Yeah, this is right. So it's us. Okay. This is the report okay. that we write okay. 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 about okay. 
the superintendent. So okay. May, yeah, so that's. Okay. Right. Well, I'm going question. to take the feed, both feedback and yeah. see if there is there's okay. a way to clarify that a little, make it clear for everybody. But I'll take that feedback. All right, great. Any other feedback? All right. I lost my agenda. All right, we'll move down to. Report of the board number 2A, discussion C4.4, school board chair's role. Again, the presentation, is there any comment on this presentation of interpretations? to the board self-evaluation that was enclosed. Is there, same thing, is there one that this you'd like to use? Do you want to keep using what we've been using? Do you want to make a change? Auto Remind me which one we've been using. <clears throat> which one we've been using? Um, it was, it's the one with the bubbles that say rarely, sometimes. So it's none of these? None of these. Okay. See if I have a copy in here. Pretty close to one. As far as the uh, rarely. Yeah, yes. B section where one person is going to be spending part of their meeting trying to divide the mind between what's happening and are we in compliance with these items. Uh, I'm distracted enough doing this and thinking about somebody who's taking notes who's distracted enough and somebody who's being a timekeeper, I'd like to be able to participate in the discussion. And so I, 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 that's why I didn't particularly care for that, mm -hmm. that option of being that one nominated person to try to maintain a divided so mind and not, and not participate. Now, the flip side of that, I'm sorry. No. Go, go ahead. Keep going. You're, you're no. the, the, the flip side of that is, is that if we do another one of these and we all turn them in, then what happens? Well, it's uh, not going to be a turn in. It's going to end up being a dis uh, an agenda item where we're discussing it and having the work done at the table and so, a turn in. But it's not, before it was just a turn in. Everybody turned it in. Maybe we talked about it a little bit, and, but if there was a problem, then this board in particular would use those forms. Um, I met with the vice chair and the secretary. We'd go through them and try to figure out what we could do to improve the process of the meeting and maybe use some of that information. But there wasn't always a discussion at the table. So this is going to bring it to the table. Anyway, whatever form we use is going to come to the table to be discussed and so that the board as a whole is working out. At the end of the meeting? Mm -hmm. Right. So if we all, let's say just for example, we all did option one, which was everybody fills this in. They're all going to get passed down to the end of the table, and one person's going to have to like collate it all No, down. no, we're going to talk about it. We're going to say. How are we going to talk about it if well, everybody's. We're going to say, so, you know, we provided strategic leadership by focusing on the ends. You know, it did. How many of you are saying always? And, you know what? We're going to find the niche. You know how many of you are, are saying never? Where, where's the in between? Okay. Who's in between? What are you looking like? All right. What can we do to improve that? You know, does somebody have an example of what they saw happening that they think this might be an option we should try? It's having that discussion at the table so that it doesn't. It's not always my responsibility to say, wait a minute. Back up, <laughs> or Barry's responsibility to say, you know what, we're always running over time. We're all having that discussion. So. Okay, so that would be if we did option one. If we did option 1A, short version, same thing. 
Very much. Yeah, I think we could use any any of those. Tools any of these options. It's going to be an agenda way. item at the end of this meeting right. to go through the evaluation. It's going to be an hour kind of thing. It could be okay. five, ten minutes where we have the discussion. I mean, maybe maybe people feel like you know what that we all need to talk about this. This is a real problem. This is a real problem tonight. We need to do something to get in front of it and change what we're doing. So, Barry. So, what was added to the one A to make it the dash B? This uh, part the B. They, they just oh. chose the option of who filled it out. That confused me originally, too. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your chance okay. to get away from being a timekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> so they chose just one A and discarded B, because that's why it's called. No, they chose. They chose the B option. Option okay. one A, the B option of one A. Assigning to one member right. versus all okay. members. Right. So, I mean, this board could decide one A, A. Where we're all going to do it, and we're going to do a five-minute debrief, and then one member would collect the forms and keep the information because, in, in theory, there will be a monitoring report that the board will write, to, and they may use some of the information provided on this form as part of their monitoring. So, and you don't want to see there, sorry. <laughs> While I'm trying to take minutes and do the meeting, I completely appreciate how difficult it is. To, of course, minutes are hard because you're trying to take everybody's words down. So I like the, I'm fine with the 1A A option. I think that the debriefing at the end is useful because I think it's an education piece as well. Because as you've just done the meeting, you can really go through the process and people can really talk about their interpretation of this and where we are. And I think just as a board that gets everybody sort of moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Doug? I, I agree with Sandy. I'm looking at the, the you know, option two and stuff, and, and you got to fill all the questions. you got to do a little narrative of what was going on and stuff. And I think that, that you know, it's going to be tough to do. You know, it may be helpful, but I don't know how helpful that's going to be down the, down the line if they're going to use it for a modern report. Quantitatively, I think this the um, you know the the option one a a I like the idea of this debriefing as part of the debrief, and if you need comments, you write comments in there. Not not that you're kind of forced to answer the questions that are you know that what you thought about the the, the meeting how, how well the meeting went or something like that. All right. Um, are you looking for a motion? I am. I'm sorry, Miss. Did I interrupt? You? So all I wanted to say was this reminds me of an episode of MASH where they talked about the fact that it, it took them four months to start the uh, peace process because they couldn't decide if the table should be round, square, or rectangular. <laughs> so we're doing we a lot. We're, this, is, this is a lot of conversation, two meetings in a row, about figuring out how we do a meeting, which I think is freaking hysterical. I'm sorry. <laughs> Otto, did you have a? Were you going to make a motion? I certainly don't have any more comment. <laughs> were you going to make a motion? Move to accept option 1AA. Yeah. All right. I'll second that. Otto and Benita. All right. Got to find the right position. 1AA. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor of adopting and being the board self-evaluation tool, one, the 1A one option, A, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Okay. Um, we no longer need executive session. Right. All right. Is there any other? Is anybody? Jody. Just, um, I'm just curious. With the whole Act 46 vote that just passed, and um, um, the unified board members that are going to be on that board, are, when are we going to know who all of those board members are? are? What, we're like who was voted? In it? Okay. Karen so can tell you. Karen, can, <laughs> yeah, Karen can tell you, um, but um, we're waiting for the 30-day oh, okay. recertification. Oh, okay. Period. So um, I know some town clerks have been asking about whether board members would come and take oath, take their oaths. But at this point, we need to wait that 30 days. And the plan is to meet 
and I believe in January or February for that new forming board to meet then and start planning their work. But right now, the, I think every, um, you know everybody's waiting for the, the the vote to be certified. Okay, thank you. There weren't any towns that had more people on it than they had slots for it. track Bristol was. Sure. Oh, Moncton, sure. Moncton was the only um, Moncton, that okay. had two run for three of three of us ran for two positions. Okay. So. Um, I didn't know about that. One. And Jen, Jen Stanley, and myself were elected to that to the new supervisory union board. So um, and Bristol has slots to fill, and they will be addressing. They will be able to appoint while they while that board still exists. They will have the authority to appoint to the new board. So they'll do that. Um, other, let's see. Oh, another other. I was. I hope everybody got to see the play. Yeah, it was awesome. Fabulous. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was a. It's the best ever. Yeah. Really good. My grandkids had a hard time seeing it. Oh. It was long and late. It was so long. They did. It was a good play. But he had a kid in there that was especially long. <laughs> <laughs> Was that? Yes. When he had a kid in the play, you had to wait around for them to, you know, oh, every yeah. night. You had to wait to pick them up. You know, we're not that far away, but I imagine somebody in Lincoln had to, you know, either be prepared to be down there or whatever. So. Yeah, it's a tremendous amount of work. One of the incredible. Just yeah. as an other, other, those are the mo the when I when I think about that kind of a thing, it's uh, I feel like in our. Uh, Thinking about uh, individualized learning, I feel like there's certainly uh, many aspects of the plays and the th those kind of things where I feel like there should be credit given to people. Um, and I think that I think I just am hoping that that is going to be something that happens as time goes on, so that there is there is ways to do that. It's the same with phys ed. If if you can't fit a phys ed in when you're supposed to be taking phys ed and you play varsity baseball, that should count as a fit. You know, there should be a way. So I'm hoping that as time goes on, Mount Abraham is able to develop that kind of a look at what kids do and how being in a, in a play about in, something happening in England, they would be able to uh, have that be part of their curriculum and, and get some credit for that. So I'm just hoping to see that happen in the next several years. Well, I'm not on the board anymore. I would really like to see that happen. Okay. We're good. Yeah. Right. Is there any other? All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. We just need to collect those pretty colored I'll sheets. Off, yeah. I'll second that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Can I hear Barry and Joey? All right. All those in favor of journey, please say aye. Aye. I really appreciate it.